The M3 Pro MacBook Pro has kind of been labeled as the black sheep of the M3 lineup by some, and I think they're wrong. Maybe you'll agree with me. Either way, let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube? Thank you so much for taking time out of your, out of your day to check out this video. Um, I do hope that you find it useful or beneficial in some way. Um, but either way, thank you. So uh, today with this video, I'm hopefully gonna keep it fairly short. This is not gonna really be a product review of the M3 uh, MacBook. There's probably a million or more YouTube channels doing reviews, benchmarks, all sorts of things for the M3 lineup. And they're great. You know, my favorite probably is Max Tech. Today, I think they do a wonderful job of really diving into the, the MacBooks extensively. Um, so that's not going to be what this is. This is going to be more of a buyer's guide, if you will. Um, mostly focused on this, the 14-inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Um, so as I've said, this has kind of been labeled as sort of a, uh, an odd product or the black sheep of the M3 lineup. And I just don't think that's accurate. Uh, I think this is, by and large, the product the majority of M3 purchasers should be getting. Um, so in my opinion, there's really only two SKUs of the MacBook, uh, the M3 MacBook Pro that should be purchased. Um, the first one is if you're a professional and you legitimately make money from your computer, you know, not like somebody, you know, like me, you got some small time YouTube channel. You know, no, not for you. I'm talking about you actually provide for your family with your computer. Then I think you should go with uh, the 16 inch M3 Max and the SKU that I would recommend is the 48 gigs of RAM with a upgrade to the two terabyte hard drive. Um, now that's a hefty price to pay. Uh, I think when I looked it up, $4,400 <laughs> for that laptop. But again, I think if you're a real professional that's making money off your computer, that's what I would recommend. Just go to it that way. You're gonna shell out buckets of cash, but Hopefully that laptop can last you two, maybe three years, even more depending on what you do, right? But you get a couple years of good use out of a really high-end machine. Everybody else within the sound of my voice should get this, the 14-inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro. So this model comes with um, the 12-core CPU, 18-core GPU, 18 gigs of RAM, and the one terabyte hard drive and it comes in at $2,400. And still um, quite a bit of money, but inside of the M3 lineup, you know, they got the base model, right? Which is the 14 inch now, 1600 bucks. I just don't think you should be buying a laptop nowadays, especially for that money with eight gigs of RAM, but even more so a 512 gig SSD. That gets really limiting after a while and um, it becomes a burden to manage that hard drive. Um, so I think this is the model that the majority of people should go with. Again, if you are a professional, you make money with your computer, get the 16 inch M3 Max. I think, you know, that's a good investment. Everybody else, I think this is the SKU you should jump up to. Um, it's got 18 gigs of RAM, so it's got enough to where you're not really feeling overly limited by it. Um, but you also understand at the same time, you're not a full-time professional, you know, so you don't need tons of RAM because you're not working on super big projects, right? For someone like me, my channel, um, you know, Lord willing here before the end of the uh, next year, maybe we'll be over a thousand subscribers, but very small, right? I can make videos on this all day long and it's not an issue. And um, I'll have the benchmarks going up on here. I didn't do a lot of benchmarks because again, you've seen them all at this point. But it has tons of power for everyday users. Uh, and that's what makes it a really great option. And with the one terabyte hard drive, you know, you're not really fighting your storage that much. You can, you know, you can store some things on this laptop without bricking the thing. Um, and then you just get all the wonderful benefits of a MacBook with the excellent build quality, the beautiful screen, the keyboard, which is immaculate, trackpad, which is great you know, silent operation for the most part, cool operation for the most part. Um, you get all of that. And 
the price is relatively affordable. I get, I mean, anytime you talk about Mac, nothing's really affordable, but $2,400 for again, sort of an every, every man's computer that will last you for two to three years. You know, it's funny listening to some of the reviews is, oh, should you upgrade from the M2 to the M3? No, of course you should. You shouldn't upgrade from the M1 to the M3 unless you make money with your computer. The whole point of buying the MacBook is that you're spending all of this extra money paying this Apple tax, but you should have a good machine for many years to come. That's the whole reason of buying it. And the same goes for this. Um, if you're just looking for sort of that everyday computer that you can lounge on the couch, uh, you know, surf in the web, doing some things, or even, uh, like I said, with a channel like mine, right, a small time channel, you got a little bit of creative work that you're doing. This can do that all day and it's a breeze and it actually makes it somewhat enjoyable because of how well the machine is built and, you know, the OS and everything that works together. It's great. So I think this is the laptop the majority of people should get. Um, I don't think there's a lot of limitations here. Now, I think it's a bit, you know, and again, you don't really want to get into price to performance and stuff like that when you talk about Mac and Windows because it's, you know, you want a Mac, you want a Mac. Who am I to tell you what to spend your money on, right? But, um, you know, it, you listen to some people, especially like the Max Techs, who I like, but, you know, every benchmark that runs is, whoa, is the most outrageous. And it's not, you know, for some things it is, you know, when you run things like Speedometer 2.1, it's outrageous the numbers that it gives you. Um, but use it usability uh i don't notice a drastic difference between this and like um you know this here by framework 13 this is what i use every day it's got a 13th gen i5 in it with 16 gigs of ddr4 normal everyday productivity tasks i wouldn't know that know the difference uh, my wallet would know the difference because i saved a thousand dollars on that but again you're already in the apple ecosystem so this is what I think you should get. Um, everyone else, just shell out the money, get the 16 inch. So uh, the one area that I felt was very underwhelming um, with this laptop, and I've thought about this with every MacBook that I've used in the Apple Silicon lineup, and I you know, typically have to test out an Apple computer every six months just to remind myself that while they're wonderful, I just don't really like Mac. <laughs> I'm kind of a Windows guy. Every six months, you know, I get uh, convinced by all the great marketing on YouTube and I go and give it another try and go, yeah, I like Windows. Um, but the video editing, you know, the playback, uh, the timeline was super smooth and great, but the export times just aren't good. You know, as you saw on the benchmarks there, rendering out a 30 minute video in both Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, uh, 4K, uh, H.264 taking roughly 17 and a half minutes to render out a 30 minute video. Yeah, I mean, it's all right, but it ain't great, you know? So I thought, especially for me, because video editing is by and large the majority of what I would use this creatively for, uh, not great. But there is the plus side of that, that, um, you know, you can do it sitting on the couch, unplugged from a charger, it doesn't get cool or it doesn't get hot. It doesn't get loud. So there is a bit, big benefit to that. Um, and the one big negative, the reason why this became sort of labeled as the black sheep of the M3 family is because it's sort of, I think the previous M2 model, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it had the, the 12 cores, but it was 8P cores and 4E cores. This went to 6P cores and 6E cores. And that was kind of why it was labeled as, you know, maybe a lateral movement if you're going from the M2 Pro to the M3 Pro. But I think they're wrong there. I think going with the 6P core, 6E cores, again, for the vast majority of users, where this is sort of an everyday laptop with some creativity involved, I think that makes sense. And the reason I think it makes sense is because Apple Silicon, the beauty of it and the revolution of it wasn't necessarily power. As I mentioned with the video editing export, Eh, some of the power can be ho-hum, right? It's middle of the pack, if you will. You know, it's Cinebench numbers don't blow anything out of the water. Um, but it's efficiency, and not even just efficiency for efficiency's sake. There's been laptops for years that have gotten great efficiency in battery life. But what Apple Silicon really did to revolutionize, you know, the computer industry 
was efficient power. It's a laptop that's very powerful and uses very little um, battery. So if you want a more powerful laptop, you can get one. Now you can't really get a more efficient laptop. That's probably, you know, but one that is this powerful and this efficient, that's where it revolutionized. So to me, losing a couple P cores, I'm probably even in favor of that. You know, I did my um, battery test here with a six hour YouTube playback, brightness set to 50%. And after six hours of YouTube playback, this had 67% battery left. So, you know, my public math, I'm just gonna simplify it. That's easily over 20 hours of battery life on YouTube videos, simple tasks. And for the power that you get from this 14 inch M3 Pro, with that battery life, that is why people rave about Apple Silicon. And that's why it's worth recommending even for the exorbitant price that many of these machines are. So um, I don't know how helpful you found this video. Uh, if anything, maybe I helped you save a little bit of money and uh, you know, or maybe cost you some money and you just went, all right, fine, I'm getting the 16 inch M3 Max. But um, I think those are the two SKUs to go with. Every other SKU, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. To me, I think you're either just kind of wasting money on the base model or you're kind of, you know, trying to find some middle ground as a professional and save some money when really you should just go ham, get the M3 Max and uh, really get that laptop that's going to be good for a few years. So that's all I got here. Um, I'm not going to be holding on to this laptop. It's going to be um, going back, but... It's a great machine. You know, I'm not a Mac guy, but I can still understand the appeal and the joy that I, you know, have in using it. It's just, boy, nothing feels like a MacBook in your hand when you're just walking around from place to place and popping that lid open and you get to work. It's just, uh, I get why people like them for sure. So if you guys have comments, um, please let me know. Oh, and one thing I will mention is, you know, this over the M2 or even the M1, um, you know, if you can find one for a good deal for the older model, and again, you're the casual user like me, I think you should maybe go and save some money. But you still get the benefit if you go with this M3 model of the newer technology, right? Um, you still get the ray, uh, the ray tracing. You still get the mesh shaders. You still get the dynamic caching and that sort of stuff, which, depending on your workflow, could be very beneficial to you. Um, never mind the Dell XPS Plus. Um, we don't want no Dell XPS plus 13 here, I'm talking about MacBooks. But um, so there is a benefit to the newer. Again, do you need that? No, probably not, you know, if you're just a casual user like me. But, uh, you know, from what I've seen, sort of the used market with M2s and stuff and M1, you're not saving that much money. So maybe, you know, this might be a good option for you. So sorry, this was kind of just a rambling, you know, spewing out a bunch of stuff that I thought of on this Mac. Again, I do hope you found it useful, helpful. If you got questions, let me know down in the comments. I do my best to answer all of them. While you're down there, maybe take a second to drop a like, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I don't inundate you guys with videos all the time, but I do appreciate when you're around checking out the stuff that I do come out with. But otherwise, that is all I got. Have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, God bless.